Rub up your engines! Today, I'm gonna show you how to fix a car by just moving the tires around. Yes, sometimes it's that simple. Now my RAV4 customer has a problem. It's an older car, it's 10 years old, it has 180 something thousand miles on it, so it's got wear. And the problem that they're complaining about is at higher speeds, when they brake, they feel like the car is losing control. So if you have a problem where you feel you're losing control when you're braking, first, of course, check the brake system. You gotta start logically. The brake fluid is full. And when I look under the vehicle and check all the wheels, the front, and walk around and check the back ones inside and out, I don't see any leaks. Well, I figured it probably isn't leaking because the brake fluid is full, but you never know, it could be starting to leak. But they're bone dry, so they're not leaking. And I pull off the right front wheel to see what the brake pads look like. Pull off the hubcap. Yeah, this thing still has a hubcap. Dinosaur technology here. Off it goes. Double check the brake pads. We can see in here, they're still plenty of thick. They're really thick. There's plenty of brake pads. Nothing's particularly worn. This is just surface rust. Steel's always gonna rust, so there's really nothing wrong with the braking system. There's no leaking fluid or anything anywhere. And when I pull on the whole assembly, it doesn't wobble back and forth, so the tie rod's good, and up and down it doesn't wobble, so the ball joint's good. Now, this is an old car, and it's got the original struts on it. This is just a dust cover. It's ripped, but the strut itself, it's dry. It's not leaky. Now here's where most dishonest mechanics are gonna take you for a ride. They'll say, oh, you got 180,000 miles, your struts are worn out. Now, I'm sure they're worn. It's got 180,000 miles on them. But I took it for a spin. It rode good. When you hit bumps, it didn't particularly bounce around too much. The only problem it really has is at higher speeds when you brake, doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel stable. Now, of course, with the jack up in here, we'll pull on this side too. But it doesn't have any play either, really. And again, the strut. As you can see in here, the rubber dust cover's ripped again. But the strut itself, it's dry. It's not leaking. But as I said, a lot of mechanics, they see a car, it's 10 years old, 180,000 miles. They're going to sell a set of very expensive struts to the customer saying, oh, that's why the struts are worn out. But in this case, that is not what's happening. Now, sometimes if the back struts are warm, that'll make it handle weird when you brake at high speeds, but hey, we push on it. It doesn't particularly bounce. It doesn't have bad rebound. On either side when you push it, see? It's still pretty stiff for a car that's got 180 something thousand miles on it. When you start it up and look, it doesn't have any particular warning lights on. The only warning light was the airbag, which is checking itself and turned off. So there's no kind of warning with the brake system. Well, then what could be possibly wrong at this thing? Feels like it's kind of losing a bit of control when you brake at high speeds. Well, understand this. When you brake your car, where is the braking occurring? The brakes squeeze the rotors, but what's actually stopping the car? If you got tires, you're right. Tire treads hitting the ground, that's what's stopping your car. And if you have any type of problem, especially with the front tires being worn, maybe being out around. When you brake at higher speeds, you're gonna feel that. Now, of course, check the tire pressure on all four tires. Something as dumb as differential tire pressure can cause all kinds of squirrely stuff when you brake hard. But in this case, all four tires were pretty close to 32 and a half PSI. So it's not the tire pressure in this case. So let's check the tires, take a close look. Well, when we look at the back ones, we see these are really pretty new tires. See, they still got these little nubs and the molds. They got a lot of tread, and they're in excellent shape in the back, on the left, and again on the right rear. See, you can see the little molding nubs. They're still sticking out. But let's go to the front. Here's the right front tire. You can see half of those nubs are worn off, and even though it's got tread, they're not in as good shape as the back ones were. And when we go to the driver's front tire, we see the same thing. You can see here, there's one little nub here, but the other ones are broken off. This tire has more wear than the back ones do. Which isn't surprised on any modern car. Most cars are front wheel drive. The front tires drive the car. They wear out more because they're pulling stuff. They also do over 90% of the braking. And when you corner, they're leading into the corners. So if you got tires that are weaker in the front, a lot of times you're gonna feel that 
when you do harder braking. Now I've had this personal argument for years with the supposed tire experts and they say in modern cars put the best tires on the back. Well that's a load of baloney. Now of course you want four good tires. That's common sense. You don't want to be driving on bad tires but when you look at this car. As I took the right front tire off to check the brakes you can see it's still got tons of tread. It's not like they're horrible tires. But the back ones are indeed newer and in better shape. So there's nothing wrong in putting these still decent tires in the front on the back and putting the ones that look brand new from the back to the front. Because let's face it you break more on the front tires. The front tires wear out faster than the back tires. They also have to have the best traction for taking off without the tires slipping. I had an argument years ago with my Matrix there. It would slip when you took off fast. Especially if it was a little bit wet outside. And it had really old tires that were seven years old on it. But I thought well I'll change just the front ones so they'll have better grip and they won't slip and they'll ride better, right? So I go to the tire place and say, I want two new tires on this in the front. And following the stupidity of many companies these days, they didn't listen to a word I said and they sold me two new tires, but they put them on the back. I got in a car, I said, I want them in the front. I don't want them in the back. And they said, no, we put the good tires on the back and the other ones on the front. That's our policy. I said, well, your policy it's nonsense. Brought it home. Now I don't have a tire machine so I can't take tires off rims and change them. I just took the new tires they put on the back, put them in the front, and put the old front ones in the back. Now yeah, maybe I should have bought all four new tires. But the other tires still had about 80% of their tread left on it because we don't drive that much. Two, three thousand miles a year. So they had plenty of tread left. But I didn't like them slip. So with these brand new tires on the front of the Matrix, guess what? It didn't slip anymore when I accelerated hard. Whether it was rain, whether it was uneven pavement, it stopped the slipping by putting the good tires on the front and not the back. And in the case of this RAV4, I mean, these old front tires, they still do have a ton of tread on it, just like my Matrix did. So I'm going to put the front ones in the back and the back ones in the front. So I'll put the front down on a jack stand, jack the back up in the air, and take off the tire. And we'll pull off the hubcap again and swap the tires. Roll it out of the way and get the new tire. These electric impact wrenches are good for taking tires on and off. They don't get them too tight. And here comes the wayward tire. I will jack it back up in the front and do the other side. Jack the up camp off. Then we jack up the other side in the back and we'll swap these tires. And here comes the one that used to be in the front, now it's going in the back. You know, these are different hubcaps. These are the original ones with the Toyota emblem on them. The other ones are aftermarket, but you can only see one side of the car at a time, so who cares? <laughs> then the tire that was on the rear is going on the front. Then we reach under and get the jack stand out, then let it down and take it for a ride. Away we go. And now when we brake at higher speeds, guess what? It just stops nice and straight. The only problem here is the noise you hear because I stopped so fast that I activated the anti-lock brakes because it's cold and slippery this morning. That has nothing to do with the problem. That's just the ABS kicking in. If I stop a little slower here, you'll see you don't hear any of the noises. That was just the ABS activating. You get an old car like this, yeah, they're going to make noise. Even my wife's Lexus. If you slam on it real hard, the ABS will make weird noises as it's activating. So now you've seen how sometimes something as simple as moving your tires from the front to the back and the back to the front can solve a problem that you've had. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Freddy's a fool, 25 says, got no one Ford Taurus. I don't have any power brake assist. It's just like a rock and I got to push super hard to make it stop. When you don't have any power assist, generally there's one or two things wrong. Either the brake booster itself has gone bad or it's not getting vacuum 2001 so it's a 19 year old car so what you want to do is check that hose that goes to the brake booster on it there's a check valve sometimes the check valve goes bad so if you pull off and suck in it should open then if you suck on the other side it should close if that's not working replace that it could be that simple but that's okay follow the hose down it then clamps onto the intake manifold which is where the vacuum pressure sucks in to make it work things 19 years old the hose could easily be cracked somewhere and then suck in there and you won't have any boost. Now if all that's okay then your power boost 
booster shot and he'd have to get another one and at least it's a Ford Taurus 2001 you can get remanufactured boosters you don't have to buy the five six hundred dollar brand new one the rebuilt ones work perfectly fine you can get them all day long for a hundred something bucks you don't have to buy the brand new super expensive one those have been out so long that guys rebuild them all the time so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell